Hello everybody, I'm Tech Asuchu, the Beijing King of Swing, and I'm here with a Company of Heroes 2 replay for you, and look, the colors are all messed up at the top. We have uh, Hoi Pullid and uh, Quentin Feel Memory Acceptance. Uh, Hoi Pullid is an extremely good player, I think ranked like number like one or whatever with everything. And uh, since this is auto match, I'm sure Quentin is also good. Quentin, as you can probably tell, is the Overcommand West. And um, Hoi Pala is the uh, Russians. Russians I feel a special kinship with because many of my ancestors were Russian, but also Jewish. Not everybody's perfect. So uh, we have these combat engineers heading up north uh, early on to capture this thing. Presumably they'll move on to the fuel and we'll get the link up with these conscripts who are going to hang around the middle. We'll have to see how it works. And uh, oh, we have some building going on. Uh, some wire being set up through the truck, a very elite maneuver that only the Overcommando Vest was ever able to master in real life. Uh, in the game, they model that pretty well. Is this guy going to get stuck? That would be hilarious. If he did, I don't think he will, but that would be really... Oh, I guess uh, Quentin realizes that that might happen in repositions, <laughs> so that this does not happen. I would have, I, you know, I would have preferred him to take the risk, because if it happens, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know. You don't see that every day. It's, it's worse for you, but uh, it's life. So, we got the double conscript opening with the third conscript falling up, pretty standard shit. And, uh, not gonna bother fighting the Strum Pioneers without, uh, z numbers on the side. And, uh, we're gonna all lined up like pigeons come home to roost. Ducks come home to roost. What's the, what's, what's the saying? Like, ducks come home to roost? Pigeons come home to roost? Do ducks roost? I feel like pigeons definitely roost. I'm, you know, do roosters roost? That would make a lot of sense. How come roosters got named roosters if all birds roost, or a lot of birds roost? Because certainly more than just roosters roost. Fucking chickens probably roost. Hens, I'm sure, roost. Hens aren't roosters. Maybe that's why you call roosters cocks. Because if you call them cocks, you're not taking a thing from anything else. So this has been an exciting shoutcast so far. Um, we've learned a lot about birds. I feel like I've grown as a person. Oh, and we can see bulletins. So, uh, as expected, the Soviets have taken conscript bulletins. This is a fairly uh, normal thing for Soviets and for uh, Austria players to do, take bulletins that make their grenadiers and their conscripts better. Uh, for a couple reasons, I imagine. Number one, obviously you're going to have grenadiers and conscripts, so uh, you don't tip your opponent off to anything if you go for these doctrines. You don't um, worry about uh, wasting your doctrine or your bulletins or whatever. Um, and also because these are the units that you have early in the game, uh, the, th the small difference is like 5% faster cooldown, 3% increased accuracy, cooldown percent, 2% faster rifle reload. Small differences can maybe add up and make a bigger difference like uh, in the first opening skirmishes of the game. After that everything maybe starts to get messy and there's a race to the house and the <laughs> conscripts just make it in, which is going to be an unfortunate retreat for the Fox Raiders, but they're probably not going to take too much damage on the way out because, uh, you know, Conscripts, right? Am I right? As expected, good uh, good map control from the Soviets. That's uh, how it usually works. First, the Overcommando vest in the uh, beginning. The Overcommando choosing to set up the medic truck on this cutoff point, also to be expected. That's not a cutoff point you want to lose, and it's a nice place to be fighting around if you have a medic truck. And um, finally, as also to be expected, um, again, no, no joke. I got. I got nothing. It happened in my last shotcast too. My my mind is going. I can feel it. I'll send you Daisy Daisy and then turn myself off forever. I shouldn't joke about that because it's been like a thousand months since I last made any videos. Uh, that was a bad corner to turn. I don't know what the plan was there, but the Soviets just lost four men and the munitions on the Molotov for the price of nothing, basically. The Sturm Pioneer is going to get healed up. Uh, going to try and get the flank on this MG-34. Uh, probably going to happen with the Molotovs, but at the cost of God knows how many conscripts. Almost going to lose a squad here on the retreat. If he loses a squad on the retreat, this isn't even worth it all. Saw the flank coming, pick up the MG-34, reposition. Uh, does not lose a squad. Um, don't know what the fuck these guys are doing still sitting here. The Sturm Pioneers are just going to return and murder them. There's no way you couldn't see that coming. Of course a grenade was going to go in the house and get in the house. I don't know what the fuck the Soviet player is thinking. What is going on? It's a disaster. He's losing conscript squad on the retreat. Is these guys going to get mowed down? Are they going to make it out? It's hard to tell. They do get mowed down. The other two conscript squads get out with a sliver of health and one poor little man. What a fucking disaster. Don't go in like that against an MG-34 and a medic truck against the Oberkommando Vest in the beginning when the Sturm Pioneers 
pioneers are as good as they're ever going to be. Good golly, Miss Molly. Ugh, that was just ugly. It's hard to see the Soviets coming back from that. Um, he's got, what's he got? He's got 113, um, uh, what's it called? Fuel, and has just picked the uh, shock frontline thing, so I could call in some shock troops. Uh, once he's got the manpower, it's going to be a while, having lost a lot of people, and uh, so he's looking pretty good uh, for the Open Commando Vest at this point, who, as you'll, I'm sure, have realized, committed to a doctrine fairly early with the uh, Luftwaffe ground forces. Nothing very special. Everyone who has this game has that commander. I wish I could say that, that about all of them, but Relic is terrible, so we can't. Um, and with these MG34s, which are pretty good, they got, they've been nerfed from the time when they were basically the best machine gun, but they're still good machine guns. Uh, with these MG34s, uh, we might expect to see good map control unless the Open Commando Vest ex overextends itself, perhaps like this, but perhaps not, because we have this MG34 prevent preventing the flank by the flamethrowers, so expert play here uh, by the MG34, keeping his cool, not retreating this MG, baiting out a Molotov, and uh, really no damage in on the MG, so really uh, excellent play here by the Open Commando, and it's looking just better and better. Soviets are... Pretty fucked. I'm interested in how aggressive the Overcommando is being. Might not have expected so much forward pressure, seeing he's in such a good position. Uh, maybe figure, look, I'll sit back, rest on my laurels, I'll set up MGs on important points, and uh, just sort of hold some stuff. But no, he's really going for the jugular, uh, moving in on these Soviets in every potential uh, location, clearing out these last conscript squads that are behind enemy lines, so to speak, and now he's gonna go try and pen the Soviets in. Gonna lose another squad on the retreat, I think, if the MG opens up on it, and he finally does, but uh, sort of belatedly, it seemed like, and he you know, gets out with just a sliver of health. Oof. The Soviet player, like, has been so close to just utter, utter decimation. Uh, so many times losing these, almost losing these conscript squads, things could be going even worse than they actually are. Finally, a good flank up by the Soviets. Loses a lot of conscripts, setting that up, sort of in red cover uh, for that, but does manage to force a retreat finally on this MG. I think, uh, I'm not sure where the other MG is. Let's, uh, yeah, still at the original location. I click on it and then the mini map lit up there, and so, um, I would have liked to see that one reposition maybe a little bit to uh, deal with these sorts of flanks, maybe put it behind this green cover and face it in this direction. That would have stopped these Soviets from going around this corner much better than it did work, uh, than actually happened. And so, um, Soviet player, things could be worse, but still looking pretty awful. Has a lot of fuel, but not much else. Um, I'm not sure where I'm looking at that. So what's the plan for the Oberkommando from here? I would expect, uh, where's the second truck? This, well, I'm busy right now. Okay, go look at this fight. Where is the second? Truck? Yeah, these folks gotta get out of there. Where's the truck? Did the truck die? Oh no, there's the second truck. It's setting up. How did I not see you? So yeah, nice place to set up your tier four. It'll protect the cutoff. Uh, the other place would be sort of something aggressive like up here. Um, you know, it's a high risk, high reward sort of thing. You see, other kind of best players do both sorts of things, and. Uh, as I said, I think playing it safe when you've got this much of a lead is not an awful idea, um, unless you're sort of assured of winning when you go for the juggler. Juggler, if you get over aggressive, it's too easy to lose your early advantage to some sort of like, because you make it easier for your opponent to take you on if you get over aggressive. So uh, I think you just want to consolidate your wins and uh, yeah, do something like this, setting up this MG here. I surprise, I guess. It would have been set up over here, but he wanted to cap this point, which makes sense. Uh, this hedge is managing to block the shots, uh, which uh, wouldn't happen really if they were over here. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe getting slightly over eager would have been nice to have this here, but you never know when the Soviet's going to attack, so uh, it makes sense to try and uh, set this up. Fox Radio is doing well, staying in the fight. We're going to see a flank going over here, but I'd be surprised if that worked, given that we have this other MG34 coming up. Going to have some overlapping fields of fire. Uh, Conscript's gonna sacrifice themselves to get this flank going. Um, yeah, I'm not really feeling this. Uh, oh, he can hop in the. No, if he hops in the building, he's gonna draw a grenade. What are you doing? You know this is gonna happen. Here's the guy throwing the grenade. Fucking. Yeah, that happened basically before he got in the goddamn building. The building's almost dead. There's one man alive in there. He can do some good damage with his flamethrower, but that's only gonna work for so long, and he's gotta pull out of there. We have a mortar coming in, so finally some good news from the Soviets. That'll help him. Uh, break out. Another one of these reasons to not set up so forward um, with the Oba Commando Vest. Uh, looks like we did lose a combat engineer squad on the retreat with the flamethrower, which is really unfortunate. Um, 
Yeah, one of the reasons, again, not to set up so far, but is the overcommit of rest, especially with the Schwerer Panzer headquarters, is um, if you were up here or something, the Soviets would have no trouble bombarding you with any sort of indirect fire that they got. And boom! Turning this corner has just been a fucking horror show. Both times in this game, whenever the Soviets try it. This is just a corner, the corner of death. Ambush camouflage, now available. I love how happy he sounds about that. In the original Company Heroes, the same thing happened. Like, the, 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 the announcer would always sound so happy when you unlock stuff. Or like, really, really, uh, really fired up. Yeah, like, wow, we got fucking ambush camouflage. Let's ambush some motherfuckers. The original uh, announcer in Company Heroes was also, um... God, I can't remember his name, but he does voice acting for, like, every fucking thing. Um, like, you'll recognize his voice when you hear him. Also, the guy who played Garrus in Mass Effect, he was the American sniper in the original Company Heroes. Go back and listen to that. It'll blow your mind. I don't know if anyone famous voice acted in Company Heroes 2. Uh, look at all those... Look at all those wires. It's because it's a retreat point, but they're sort of... They're, they're clipping into everything. Like, how can you set up a fucking wire in the middle of the tent? Weird. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's anybody famous in Company Heroes 2 doing the voices because uh, THQ was going out of business, so Relic was just hiring, like, Russian hobos or whatever from the street to do all the voice acting. Not like they did a bad job. The voice acting's pretty good. And we have GG called uh, by the Soviets. There's a... <laughs> he sees the Panzer 2, which means he sees the Tier 4. And, um... That's it. So, uh, yeah. Excellent job uh, killing... Conscripts, uh, you kind of have to blame it on the Soviets for turning this corner and fighting around this place. I understand wanting to get a cutoff, but it's just not fucking happening against uh, Sturm Pioneers. And then it was just a mess trying to fight this MV-34. So that shows the importance of winning on the first engagement, and also uh, the importance of being the inherently superior Aryan race, uh, who can best all comers in any uh, contest.